seriousness. And seriousness in the fun. <laughs> Wordplay, baby! <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Oh, yeah. It is 12 minutes past the hour, 7 o'clock on this Wicked Wednesday. Thanks so much for tuning in to Jeff and Nick on Hot 96. Ooh. The women right now. I'm oh, telling you. My, my WhatsApp is just blowing up. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't seen this one since 2009. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make comeback no doubt yeah, but in the house we've got honorable jeremiah kioni he's the Daragua member of parliament and right next to him is honorable samson Cheragay. he's the nandi senator gentlemen welcome to hot 96 karibuni sana thank you bona kioni let's face it kiamba was a shocker yes it was a shocker uh because um Within three weeks, we had recovered 50% of our grounds. So it was a shocker. We, uh, we performed so well as Jubilee that we couldn't believe it. Within three weeks, we were uh, able to turn I'm the sorry, tables. do you say you performed very well? Very thought... well. Is this you the are, same Kiamba yeah, that uh, lost to UDA? Yeah, it didn't lose. <laughs> what we, do you mean you didn't lose? You postponed the, your win. We, it was the slimmest of the, the losses that you can talk about. 500 votes, but you still, a loss is a loss. Yes, I agree. But uh, you also look at your performance and like what, uh, what is likely to happen in going to the future. Senator, uh, are we listening? Are we, is this the same Kiamba we're talking about? Uh, good morning and uh, thank you for having me three years after. <laughs> and welcome, Nick. Yeah, uh, mine is just is, uh, to say, um, of course, it's a shocker to Jubilee, our former party. And um, I did campaign in Kiamba, and I can tell you Kiamba chose the future over the past. Jubilee is part of our political past, and uh, my brother should be honest with Kenyans because, uh, as you are aware, the, the, the former May his soul rest in peace, the former MP, former chairman of national security, uh, Koinange, uh, was, was a jubilee member of parliament. So jubilee did lose, and uh, in politics there is no number two, and uh, there is no 50% they recovered. It is not about, uh, it is jubilee lost. That is the only word that we know in politics. And that was the only headline, Banakioni. Okay, let's, let's, let's. And I think all the people have missed it. <laughs> and How funny. Funny. You're, 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 you're very good at consoling yourself. Are, so, 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 Jeff, in, in your win, what is that we person? We are Nick and Jeff to tell you the <laughs> other story. Uh, uh. And the other story is that we are very happy in Jubilee. Okay. No. It is not always that uh, when those who have caused you the difficulties that make it difficult for you to promise, to deliver on, on promises you've made to Kenyans, when they give you room and you're able to deliver without them, it makes you happy. Speaking of so, promises. Huh. Um, when we were in Kiaba, okay. I went to Kiaba for three weeks. Uh, my senator, who has not had the courtesy of uh, agreeing to move out of Jubri in a decent manner, <laughs> other than sneaking through either the back door or out through the window, <laughs> we were there for only three weeks to deal with a narrative they had peddled for four years. To a point where we, when we were starting in Kiamba, three weeks, it was difficult to talk of Jubilee or even to mention the name of the president. His Why? name has been soiled so much. There has been such propaganda that had been peddled for four years, which we did not bother to counter. We have been busy delivering on what we told Kenyans we would do, and we have done it. We have another couple of months to do it. But now we also know what to do and how to deal with those who chose to betray us four years ago. We demonstrated it in Kiamba, and I was with Kiamba for three weeks. I was there during the telling. It was a, it was a Juguna, Kareri, Juguna, Kareri, Juguna, Kareri. And you could tell, wow, this region has finally woken up. It is now time to deal with the facts and to put aside the propaganda and the rise for four years. And but, Nick and Jeff, mm. watch this space. We know what to do. What a Jew are a Jew. But how will propaganda <laughs> and lies rise if there's no proof against the fact that maybe work is not being done? Work you see, for, 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 done. For, Nick, for, Nick, for, Nick, for the voters to decide to move Nick, to, Nick, to try Nick. someone else, mm. it means Nick. they've lost faith in the previous person. Nick, work is being done. We have been here before. This was said of Kibaki. 
2009-2010. And there are those who could not even allow him to speak. But by the time of elections of 2013, you dare mention Kebaki in the negative. You would face the wrath of those people at the mountain. Senator, tell me something. We are headed there. Oh. Today, mm. ask people who are traveling from uh, this place is called Keno mm -hmm. to Sagana. Iyo tu kidogo. Mm -hmm. Ask them whether the work is being done. And you can actually hear the changes of tones and they are saying, yenyewe, kama hii barabara itaisha kutoka hapa kweda Sagana tu marua. Marua. Mm. Kasi huyu kijana amefanya. And I'm telling you again, watch this piece. Senator, I have to ask this question now. Maybe it's just me here. I mean, is Jubilee in denial here? I mean, are these people in denial? You know, Jeff, in a breakup, denial is part of uh, of, of healing. Of, of healing. <laughs> and I can confirm that what happened in Kiamba is that uh, it was a friendly match. You remember Karir Njama, mm. uh, if you have noticed, was a, a hustler. And he has been, uh, we have been working with him closely As in UDA, four years. Yes. Yes. UDA. Yes. <laughs> and therefore, in fact, Karir Njama was our candidate. He did explain when he was approached out of fear. He decided to run in Jubilee, and I remember he was not even interested for Jubilee members to go and campaign with him. In fact, when Jubilee gave him nomination, he lost 70% of the support. Yet he was the leading candidate then. He would have stayed in New Deal. But we understand those are... The, those are you, the, John Juguna, the young man, Wanjiku, was a, a little known name in, uh, in, in Kiamba. He was just a donor riasla, and he made it to be part of the Kiamba. So from where I sit, I think when my brother says Jubilee knows what to, we have known what to do, is that they have lost all the by-elections. What are they knowing? If Jubilee will only celebrate the win of an MCA over that this was a big party that had the president, majority of members in the Senate, in the National Assembly, in the governorship, and now they lost in Bonjari, they lost in Kabuchai, they lost in Mantugu, they lost in Ruriri, they lost in London Ward, and many other areas that they have lost. So so what we are saying is simple is that uh, Jubilee is part of our political history, and I think going into the future, Jubilee must accept. Because you can see there is a fight, they want now to eject the people like Murades and Tuju. It is the same people who ejected us. I remember the last time when I came here, I was the chairman legal. Mm -hmm. Now, after three years, I'm coming when I'm not, after being dwelled by the same people. So what is happening, Jeff and Nick, in the in the Jubilee is that there are so many people that have been chased out of Jubilee than who are remaining inside. And you have seen that there is, there is panic. People yeah. like, uh, do you remember yeah. the, 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 the officials you who are a, being you blamed? You must have a comma. Of course, you can't, I, you can't talk no, forever. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I've been listening carefully, <laughs> yes. so I, I wanted to de demystify what he has been saying. Mm. Is that um, you can't when, when all this, when, when, when the people like J Jeremiah Kioni were blaming uh, the party officials, they were being told where they put 140 million that were meant for campaigns of K of Kiamba. So there is, it is not about, as I conclude, it's not about they, they want to salvage the Jubilee or they love the president. In fact, the people who, who love the president are us who are telling the truth. These people are fighting who will sit on the eating table. So they are trying to elbow each other. Mm -hmm. That is what is happening in Jubilee at the moment. But speaking you know, of eating, yeah. uh, you know, uh, everyone, you know, campaigns to get into office to represent the youth. So like you did, you've taken that, you know, uh, narrative of the hustler. Everyone says they came from humble beginnings and they've risen up to where they are. But now the people you tell these stories, what happens to them? You've said you're building roads, but a road without a job leads you nowhere. You're seated at home doing nothing. MPs at, home, at, at work, senators at work, MCAs, but the man on the ground, the young, the youth, what is the future? Without giving me an electoral promise, because I've had them over the years. <laughs> what one, is the plan one, for the youth in those areas? Things, mm. One of the things is that you cannot have a, a, a political debate without promises. People are elected on what you promise to do, not on what you had done. What you had done is only one of the things that would help you win the confidence of the people you are talking to. But even before I come to that, very crucial, because I believe that what we should be talking about are the issues you've just listed, Nick, yes. other than the propaganda that we have uh, dealt with for four years. Can you imagine we fed ourselves on propaganda for four years? Mm -hmm. And there we have now, out of the nine by-elections, only one has been won by UDA or two. If you're 18 now, mm. 
and you said the last 10 years. So that person was like 10 years when you started. You can't keep promising. You know, Kenyans are getting smarter every day. And I want to tell you, you promise the world, fail to deliver, then yes. towards the election, promise again. That we are getting smarter. More than, uh, more than 50% of the population that we have in parliament is of the age of the senator. Young people. It is not where we were before. So it is not old people promising the youth. It is the youth people promising themselves. We have a huge number of very able young people who are doing their work in parliament, including the senator. So, But it is unfortunate that we have had to go through the difficulties that we have gone through this period. When we thought we were going to recover, we were hit by COVID. But I also want to say Speaking that we have not done uh, what we should have done. We have ended up quarreling more politically than thinking of the solutions that needs to be delivered to Kenyans. Instead of delivering on what you promised, you continue promising when you are in office that the office that is supposed to deliver. Mm. That is the wing that is read by the senator. And it is actually <laughs> unfortunate that we promised when we were campaigning and immediately we got into office, they again started promising. The senator. That is betrayal. Just, just before that continue, you've said COVID came. Mm. Yeah. And the COVID might not go anytime soon. Yeah. What are the people on the ground supposed to be? There's supposed to be a cash transfer program. It's mad with irregularities. People are complaining that they're not even getting that 2,000, 3,000. When will we get systems? Because you know we can't promise again that in 2021 we are going to input systems. People are losing their jobs now. Mm. People need food now. They're Children desperate. must go to school. People must eat. The very ah, basics. Nick, now... What what? Because now no, you will get taxpayers money on time. Office. But we now are, the people are We are early in office. Uh. What we should be doing, all of us, is looking for those solutions. Not to again start complaining like not like you are not in office. How long does if, it take allow me to get to a say solution? Uh. If, you are, if you are in office and you are just promising, and you have been given an opportunity to deliver, and you are not prom delivering, it actually means even being given another opportunity, you will again continue promising. What is important is to deliver for the time that you are there. And this is what I'm saying. We made a big mistake. For four years, in fact, more than four years, we've been politicking. And the wing that is led by my colleague, Senator, here, has engaged us in politics, in competition, in betrayal, in denial, instead of sitting and saying, we have these problems. How can we help the young people today? Because even if you promise that you are going to deliver the wheelbarrow, uh, 2023. Like you are saying, the young man who was 18 is still growing older. Those years, why are you allowing them to go to waste? If it is a wheelbarrow that you want to deliver 2023, they are still available in the market. Why don't you come and we deliver to the wheelbarrows now? So that we can but, help but, the Kenyans. Must just be about wheelbarrows? Why <laughs> can't you no, take no, I'm just giving the an example. to that's the a next level? level. Okay. That's the yeah. thing yeah. I'm talking about. We are back to you haven't addressed the yes. COVID story because COVID <laughs> is still on and, and one COVID year and a half and also on people don't have jobs in your constituency, for give example. Give the president credit and look at what other leaders in the world have done. Kenya is one of the countries that has performed best in managing COVID. And this has been done by president alone because he was abandoned by his, his deputy. Amekua kipabana peke yake. Now he has, even if there is, a, and he has helped us achieve a lot uh, more than what other countries are, are doing. Obviously one wing is, you know, is hostile to the other. You're not getting along. This marriage is over. <laughs> Walk away. My brother Jeremiah is lying to Kenyans because the Koidanga was the chairman of national security. He was in government. Then if he was performing in Kiamba, then we would not be having a problem. But that, that matter rests there. <clears throat> Secondly, you have talked about um, the issue of uh, COVID. I think I agree the president has largely tried. Uh, and, and the measures that have been put in place, we agree. But the, where we disagree is that the vaccination of Kenyans so that we can go back to life. We can we can get, and, and I was disappointed, he's a member, and, and, and Nick has asked a very important question, he's a member of National Assembly, they make budget. How much money did they put to ensure for 7.5 million Kenyans get vaccine? And I've heard uh, the government saying they have ordered 10, 10 million from Johnson & Johnson, but when you look at the money that was allocated, appropriated by the National Assembly, the budget, is not sufficient to ensure that for 7.5 million Kenyans are access vaccine so that we can be able to reopen the the people can go back to their lives the people who lost in hospitality industry so from where i sit i think it is very number three and finally before i answer your question jeff is that he has been saying that the deputy abandoned the president it is the other way around 
The president, through executive order number one of 2018, removed coordination of government functions to CS Fred Matiangi. So when did the deputy president uh, escape or uh, abandon the president? And number two, Jeremiah is being selective. Number four. Number four. Number four. Yes. Jeremiah has been ex <laughs> executive. Number four, you know you should give him one-on-one -on -one <laughs> with Jeremiah Kione. So what I'm saying is that um, where we are sitting is that Jeremiah and his people, the Kielewekes of this world, have been telling us it is because of the handshake of March 2018, the country is now peaceful, it is calm, the president is working together with the, with Raila Odinga. You remember even in parliament, the seats we are occupying are being occupied by ODM. So where, where does UDA or Tangatanga -tanga affect? Because they have the numbers as they have now been peddling across the parliament. Now they have numbers of ODM, the NASA and others. It is only us in Tangatanga -tanga who, who maybe don't support them. So the question is, why were they lying to Kenyans before that? Because of Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta handshake. Now the country is more peaceful, the country has delivered more, but is now lying again, saying for the last four years, the government has not delivered. For the COVID vaccine, 10 million of them. Today in the paper it says, between the port and the lab, there's really some mess up, so it doesn't even get to the, the laboratories that need to test people. So testing is very low. Right? Yes. Second of all, there's the Kemza situation where things are overpriced and everything. What are you doing to mitigate Kemza's season two coming? You understand? And, and, and also, BBI is all about changing how Kenya is governed and stuff like that. One of the things that is in BBI is exactly that. That you are in court because you are ready to have students. This issue of uh, being hard until the case is concluded, we are saying, we put it aside and say, we are losing more as a country. If there is a reason, substantial reason for you to be taken to court, we are not saying that you have stolen, but please step aside until this case is over. But we must come arrested. with a counter. Hold on. For you we to must be come with a counter position so that we do not have people who take others to cause to court maliciously because of political uh, competition. So there must be a caution there. But it is important to do what other nations do, like in the US. You do not even wait for your case to be heard. If people say that you were seen doing this thing yesterday and it is not right, you resign and then deal with the issues in court. When we get to that level, we will reduce the level of steering in this country. And that and is one is that of the time? proposals in the BBI. And it is for that reason that some many people fought BBI. Look at the number of scandals that was, were reported during the first term. So now there's still look. scandals, but they're less. Is they that are fewer? Meaning, <laughs> and, and, and you're proud of that progress? <laughs> yes, I can tell you. No, 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 no. I can't be proud if we have been able to curtail the stealing. We are better than where we were. Remember how, how bad we were doing when before Kibaki came into power? We were growing at negative two percent. Now we are and the stealing uh. was that high. We have continued to deal with the stealing, but there's no time that you are going to say we are home and dry. Countries that are 200 years uh, into independence are still dealing with the issues of corruption. So do not think that this is a place you... This is but you see, we are not in those countries. We are here in Kenya, and but the money that is being stolen is, is what's exist. preventing... You know, the youth yes. are getting sadder and sadder. Ni, now, the next ni, thing... Ni, when, hold on, let me tell you what's going to happen. Uh, no, very soon, mm. we'll have now a budget allocated for mental health Manenos. You and see, you if you don't have a job a and, you, and, and you have uh, the help loans coming, maybe you've got a child here, you want to progress in life, then we'll say we are locating 10 billion for mental health to help alleviate this problem. While all we have to do is make sure if you go to school, when you finish and you're 18, you can start with those jobs, start at the supermarket level and grow. But you see if the system is at a point where you are 45, 50, you have a bachelor's degree, and you're starting at jobs that would normally be for high school kids the, in other the countries, Express then the highway. system, yes. it, we are being let down. Express superhighway will not benefit everyone. We have the Express superhighway. Mm -hmm. There's another high, highway being done from Riron all the way to Mount Summit. We will be spending almost some 250 300 billion shillings. This is money that is being spent in this country that is not from the taxpayers from this, taxpayers from this country. It is the pub, private public partnership that we are using. The, the people from France, from other parts of the world, have now some faith in our political stability. And they have agreed to invest that amount of money for 20, 27 years in this country. What does that mean? The 180 billion the, the 40 billion that we perhaps we are spending along the superhighway, some 250 billion, instead of us taking it from treasury, it is money that is now a field for these young people to get startup capital.
to deal with the issues uh, that have become the soft human touch, which is what we have not been doing as a country. We've been using our money to, to do the infrastructure. And when we do the infrastructure, we have no cash transfer to give to the old people. We cannot be able to, to cater for their medical health. Education also suffers. The government must be allowed to deal with those soft uh, part of a human being. And we must then attract international capital to come and do what they are doing with the superhighway, what they are doing with the Rironi. Those are just two examples of, of investors who said, we have faith in some of the things we, we, we are, you are doing. We like the hard check. And for this reason, we will invest in this kind of money here. I, you know, you, you can giggle, but uh, because I think I've gotten you. But the idea <laughs> is, uh, is that it has helped us save some 250 billion to deal with this. If we continue doing this for another 10, 15, 20, 30 years, I tell you, this country will be different. You know, they have been the one telling us that handshake has stabilized the country and president has delivered more. He's telling Kenyans today that the president has failed to deliver no, because think. Gerard Gay has not been uh, supporting government agenda in, in parliament. And I think the philosophy of Anshik was Anshik. that it would become, well, there will right. be more deliverables, there will be more roads, there will be more job opportunities, but it is the reverse. So what I'm just saying is that on the issue of corruption, um, you know the president admitted that the, his government loses daily $2 billion. And you know this is the head of state. So he, he, he can, the DPP is there, DCI is there, ESEC is there, and you are admitting before the country that every day in 24 hours we are losing $2 billion. And it is happening in the second term where the handshake is there. You remember Kemsa Haste, where even the people who have been mentioned allegedly are part of the people in the handshake. So what I'm saying is simple, is that these people, including my brother Jeremiah, what is happening on the eating table, everybody is trying to push everybody outside so that they can eat more. Finally, on the issue of economy, and, and I I agree, you know, when you talk about wheelbarrow, it, wheelbarrow is just a symbol of uh, of economy that we are trying to come up with bottom-up approach. You have seen Raila Odinga also is talking about the rural economy. You have seen Musalia Mundava, and I'm happy for the first time in my generation, the leading presidential candidates are discussing about the economy. But the sad reality is this. Let me quote the National Assembly uh, Budget Committee report. In that report, they are accepting that there are 9 trillion, listen to this, Jeff, 9 trillion stall national projects. Even in my county, all the three tamag roads, major tamag roads, one of the dam called Keben, and many other national government projects have stopped. Number two is that we have a budget which is around more than uh, three trillion Kenya shillings. Before COVID, it has, and according to KRA records, we used to collect 1.7 trillion. One trillion is being used to service Chinese debts and among others. So when you come here and tell Kenyans that the economy is doing well, that uplands that to Mount Summit that the French government has decided to fund, not that not when you are doing uh, between not express not uh, expressway, yeah. kindly Jeremiah, you are my senior, and no, you, just, should just, just, you, you should just, listen more. You should listen. You it's should not listen. The French I, government. I, of uh, the I'm president not, has been uh, talking it's to. Not the French government. Yes, that one I stand corrected. So you look even here from uh, when you seek at the concept type of expressway between Westlands to all the way to JKIA. Initially, it was that 30 billion. We are talking today about 68 billion. So the question, and I agree with Nick, that what is what is it for the Wanjiku? What is it for Kip? What is it for Mondi? What is what is it in it? It is not about the noises that we are making and telling the president the truth. It is because of inability of this government to deliver. Because finally, I want to conclude with this: when we sought re-election as Jubilee, when Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto were walking around the country, they never promised the country about BBI. They never promised the country about handshake. What they promised the country was to ensure a last mile connectivity, to ensure tuition waiver to the country, to ensure more job opportunities, to ensure the Big Four agenda. Jeff and Nick, you should be asking Jeremiah, where did Big Four agenda go? Now we have replaced Big Four agenda with BBI. The Big Four agenda is the president leaders, and my disappointment is this. President Uhuru Kenyatta, as he enjoys his sunset months before leaving office, there is no legacy project that he can go home today because BBI hijacked the Big Four agenda. And that is the reality, and, and that is why I'm saying I'm the friend of the president by telling him the truth. But him, he has to lie to sit on the hitting table, and that is what is happening in this country. In developed countries, yes. if I have a senator or I have an MP or a, whoever is elected, yes. this is what his role is. Yes. All right? So whoever I vote for is held accountable. Now, your parties, they were joined in at some point, you promised laptops, you promised universities, you promised a million jobs. Let's blame COVID. Mm -hmm. But now, what are you as a senator doing to make sure if a candidate promises, like you're good at promising, 
how do we hold them accountable so that we don't keep hearing promises next year? Because next year, no laptops will be mentioned again, better <laughs> schools, more hospitals. Mm. None of those has happened the last eight years. Ali Macho, Habiwi, Sama. This country has more electricity connectivity than we have ever had. That has been delivered by Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. We have more tarmacked areas in this country than ever since 1963. That has been delivered by Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. We have had more water pans in this country than ever since 1963. That has been delivered by Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. We have more capital injected in this country by the pu private public partnership of what I've given us two examples than ever since 1963. You cannot sit here and say the government has not delivered. But we also cannot see and say we cannot sit here and say we do not have a problem of youth unemployment in this country. We have challenges, we have to be able to face them, and we must be able to be honest to Kenyans and say. We are, have characters within government who are stealing 2 billion shillings every month or every year. Owning up to that does not de demonstrate weakness. It demonstrates confidence that you are going to deal with the thieves. And of course, when you deal with the thieves, you do not expect them to be happy. They will churn the propaganda and lies and try and distract you for a period of four years. In the fight they against will, corruption. They will, How many people have been arrested? Yeah. Just one MP went names. in and is out on and bail. And remember this, Nick, because mm. you sit here and, and you are talking to the whole of this country. Mm -hmm. there, is, there are those who are arrest and there are those who prosecute. There are those who finally do the work of judgment. Lay the blame where it should be. We have a problem with the judiciary in this country. And we have a problem with judiciary because it is the judiciary that can produce a document saying... Parliament go home. And the same time, the same judiciary says, IBC have no quorum. So we have no IBC to conduct elections. Finished. And at the same time, you are saying, members of parliament, you should not be in parliament. You deliver judgments that take us into a crisis, and you cannot deal with the crisis, with the issues of corruption. The issues of who should prosecute, how prosecution should be done, and the issues of judgment and eventual um, decisions as to whether one is guilty or not, that lies elsewhere. And when we try to do something, when who is trying to do something on the judiciary, all of you again, led by the four years narrators, they say, oh, you are revisiting. Oh, you are hitting on the judiciary. You are dealing with the independence of the judiciary. The young people of this country must be told to know the difference and to lay the blame where it is. Judiciary must wake up and do what they are supposed to do. They must move away from judicial activism. That is what is delaying us in this country. Okay, when I go to court today, mm. Jeff, and I have been arrested because there was some money lost somewhere, I can run to court and, and ask for what they call what is it? anticipatory, anticipatory bail. Mm -hmm. So that you know I'm anticipating that I'm going to be arrested. Give me bail. And the courts give you that? That's an insult to Kenyans. That has nothing to do with the Huru Kenyatta. It annoys all of us. Look at also what judicial activism has done to South Africa. Judicial activism have caused mayhem in South Africa. At now, who are being called back to the table to sort out the mess that was created by the judiciary, the politicians. Why, just because they jailed Zuma now? They may have just jailed Zuma, but the country, half the country is now on fire. And you blame them on that, judicial activism? Yes, activism. You must, you know what you are told by Mr. Kibaki? I know, Jeff, you are allowed. Nick, ni dev tu imekuja juice. No. Uyu, 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 uyu. Kibaki told us clearly. When politics and law collide, listen to politics. Be careful, because that is where the country is. You need the country to apply the law. When you have no country, where do you apply that law? Now go and apply that law in South Africa where they are burning uh, malls and running away with uh, everything that uh, don't belong to them. You need to be careful when you're in uh, management of a country. And that is why I'm happy with President we, we need to be, We need to be careful because we don't get there. Yes. Uh, what I can say about judiciary is that uh, you don't blame judiciary. I, ha I had an opportunity for three years to be the chairman of Justice Legal Affairs, and we used to sit in multi-agency that had been formed through presidential directive. And when, what I noticed is that it is not about judiciary.
Judiciary will determine on the facts a prima facie case that is before them. So when, when we sat and ESCC gave us a report, they had only succeeded in prosecuting petty crimes of corruption like 20,000 bribes. So where I sit is that we should be saying investigation and prosecution agencies must bring before courts of law a watertight case so that you can have a favorable judgment. But I agree with them that judiciary is not immune from criticism. Mm. But we should not blame them wrongly when the, the prosecution and investigation have not done their work. All right, and you can have double speak saying it was wrong to jail Suma over quantum of no, court, yeah. and then now you are saying it is it is wrong not to jail the people.